to one of your breakouts too, but just first Jason then Bob, obviously the inspiration that you guys can keep up with what you're building and getting ahead. But the interleague and beyond, what kind of a timeline as to when you really felt like you could take this to the level that you've gotten to now? Since you asked me, since you asked me to go first, the first conversation started. During the process of the interview process, this thing gets very public and very big. Um, it's an incredible academic recognition, it's an incredible host of education. Um, but I was very excited to work with a president who had an aggressive vision for what she wanted to do here at the institution. And I was very excited to work with a coach of Bob's caliber uh, that believed what Furman basketball could be. So literally from the first conversation we had to now. Um, second part of that process would be my tour of campus. Aaron Wisson helped lead that tour. And um, my first impression of the arena is this is Great, you've got a great home court advantage, but this is not going to allow us to chase excellence. This is not going to allow us to be what we can be as a program. Um, but having a basketball background, I knew that. I've done a lot of research on it. I've seen other institutions. I've seen other buildings. And if you're going to have a great coach, if you're going to have a great team, if you're going to have a great fan base, then you've got to have a great building to support all of those needs. So I, I'd say it started right off the bat and was, was one of the priorities, number one, that was in front of us. I think Dr. Block could probably give a little bit more context on it, but in the history of it, I mean, I think everybody around here, we've always had conversations about what And I think once we got a group of people that started to see that there was a vision that we can get it done, then all of a sudden it became a conversation of, well, we'll never get Timmons right, to where all of a sudden we started getting some momentum around people that said, hey, we can get this right. And um, I think that was the biggest proponent that was missing, was just an, an idea that, hey, this can be done, and uh, in the fashion that we're able to do it. Yeah, this is a two-part question. Bob, can you talk a little bit about how this facility is gonna help you in recruiting? Well, I think, I think in recruiting, you know, you're always trying to make sure that you're attracting the best student athlete possible. And in order to do that, what they're going to be looking for is resources. And, you know, excellence is hard to attain, but it's easy to feel. And we all know what excellence looks like, and we all know what it feels like. It's really hard to get there. And I think when you're bringing a student athlete on campus, what you're always trying to sell is a vision, but they've got to see excellence in every area. And there's nothing more important to people, and, and second to infrastructure, you know, and then third, your physical resources. But for us, like this has been something that in recruiting has been attacked for a while. And um, what we've done is we've made the best we can, and we've created an environment that we all saw Sunday that was incredible. But what happens in recruiting is we don't get to show them game day. We show them May, June, July. And um, now they're going to be able to walk in, and they're going to see excellence from the time they drive up. And, and that's something that we've struggled with is just the curb appeal to it, right? And, 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 and where is it? And, oh, that's the arena. And then when they walk in, you know, not looking like a basketball structure, uh, we're now going to be able to drive them up to excellence and then now show them excellence when they're here. And I think just the feeling, you know, that student athletes get when, they, when they're walking around and you're showing them a vision, you've got to be able to have tangible quality connected with that. And I think that's what we're going to be able to do here. And then Jason, as a follow-up with this, this facility, in, in your mind, how does this fit within the ability of the department's ability to enhance campus experience, student life, and then so how does it impact our role as part of partners in the Greenville community as well? Yeah, just just follow up with what Bob was saying. I mean, our, everything we're doing is we're chasing excellence. We want to be the best at what we do. We have the highest admission standards in the conference. We've got the highest academic standards in the conference. Uh, we historically have won the most in the conference, and we want to continue to build that brand of excellence. So this facility is going to do it all, and, it, and it's not to create more pressure or not to create more um, challenges that come with it, but this is going to be a representation of us continuing to be the best. Uh, the vision that, that, that Bob and I have and that Elizabeth has for Furman is, is a national brand, to be a national power in everything that we do. Uh, and what this, ability, what this building does gives us the ability to do that, gives us the ability to connect. I was, I was, my heart was warm as I drove over here today and I saw it an admissions tour coming through the athletic side of campus. I, I love that. And, and I love that direction from our new vice president for enrollment, that she is looking at this as an opportunity. And to have a building, as Bob said, that has the front porch appeal, when you drive by and you see Timmons Arena and you say, who are those great players? 
that played here, that, that had a history here of success. And then I'm just th this tradition of what it is, is you got to represent it physically with the building, uh, inside the building, the environment that we can drive, the, the, the fan experience that takes place inside of there. Um, and it's recruiting, it's retention, it's game day experience, it, it's students being excited to be a part of this arena on non-basketball days. And then it's also an opportunity for us to be able to drive revenue for a department that, that desperately needs revenue to continue to grow and continue to support this institution. So I think it meets all of those different needs with the arena. And that's, that's really why we've got to do a donor-funded renovation to get this done. Bob, you and Pierre are in a very unique situation where you both were assistants here prior to taking over as head coaches. What does it mean from that perspective, just knowing where you started here, your connection to the Greenville community, your connection to Furman, and now seeing this come to fruition? Well, it's funny. We practiced this morning, and uh, one of my assistants looked at me knowing that we had this today, and he said, when did you think that we could win here? And, you know, I came here in 2011, and, um, you know, I think we won seven games one year, and we won nine twice. And what I told him was true. I always thought we could win here. You know, it's never been a, an idea that we can't win here. And it's why I stayed when I was an assistant through the transition, because I always had a conviction that you can win here. And the reason being was there was a lot of fixed, there was a lot of fixed pieces where we just had no program. We had no vision of a program, but we had a community, we had a city, we had a degree, we had an unbelievable campus. And those fixed structures, you don't have at every job. You know, you, you don't have those three pieces that they're, they're built in, like they're not changing, right? We just, we didn't have a vision of where we could get this to. And we, we, we had to start that and, you know, when Nico got here, he came with a vision, and it was it was hard. You know, it was it was years of just, you know, feeling like I mean, George is smiling. There was a hundred people out there. You know what I mean? And we just I think they were giving away free food with the ticket. You know, and um, it was just one of those situations where you had to have some resilience and some determination. That first, it was going to be done through people. Second, it was going to be done through alignment of the institution of not having a subculture, but hey, we're going to we're going to be connected in what the mission of the institution is. And then now, you know, it's like I told the team yesterday. They're looking around like, wow, this is going to be really cool. But what if we had had that discussion five years ago, what we were trying to build to, you know, like five years ago, if we're saying, hey, we're going to go win a game in the tournament and we're going to have, you know, sellouts, you know, all through this place and how, how we're going to well, you just got to keep going, you know? And I think that's what Jason said earlier is that if you're either growing or dying. And so this is a huge growth point for us, but then we've got to continue to figure out ways we can continue to push ahead. And um, because if you don't, somebody's going to eventually pass you. Or uh, Jason and then Bob, you can add in. It's, it's now going to be like kind of building a house where yeah. you got to pick out the fixtures. What led you to settle on what you're going to do here with the artist renderings? Obviously you have to work within the confines of the the structure but what kind of took you then down the pathway of what do we need what's going to help for the basketball programs what's going to be functional all that this is why i love pete yanity you just asked the best questions so i'm just a huge fan of pete so thank you uh it, it's it's going to be a design from within you know what we looked at at first is we had to look at size and scale you know so to answer some questions around it we did all the feasibility studies looking at what would a new building be um, a new building would be double the cost in terms of what it is so what's the roi uh, then we looked at size and scale. We said, what, what, are, what is our goal? We want to make this the nicest possible arena. Every fixture is a part of this is going to be a part of that process. So what that means is that we are going to use our size of our arena to our advantage. Uh, we are going to change the front of the, of the building. So the front of the building, the appeal, the curb appeal will change. Uh, but we're going to change every last element that takes place inside of the arena. So when you talk about a 360 degree concourse, when you talk about the seating, when you talk about the lights, when you talk about the sounds, when you talk about concessions, the way that you walk in the building, uh, the way that we apply every last thought process to it. I'm looking at my son Alistair who's here. We're going to have a kid zone in there because he loves to play and we've seen great increases with numbers of families that come here because they want to bring their kids on game day, that they want to experience that. We're going to think about the student side of things in terms of what's their experience all the way down to the floor. We've had great success with courtside seats uh, that have been sold out since we introduced them. What is that premium experience for our fans? So uh, we have thought through all of these different things in terms of what, it, what we want it to be. At the end of the day, when, we, when you walk in the building and it's a brand new renovated Timmins Arena, we want you to walk in and say, wow, they thought of everything. They, they touched every last aspect of this. They did a great job with what they had to work with in terms of that arena itself. 
And we want that wow factor. We want that energy factor. Uh, and as one of our lead donors uh, from Chicago said, he goes, he wants it to be loud in there. And, and we do too. We don't want to lose any of that energy that Timmins Arena has to date. But that was really our thought process around the touches to the building. Yeah, that's been the great thing about working with Jason is um, I get to coach and he's obsessed with details just like I am. And I don't have to really, if I say, hey, what about, he's already thought of it. And, um, you know, I got, we got to go up and, and play Villanova, you know, in 18. And I think we were the second game inside their renovated facility. And I remember vividly when we got there, just seeing all the details that they had really put into it. And we won the game, and, and we were all emotional, and I was trying to figure out where to go for the press conference. And I walked behind the student section, and they opened this door, and it was like a, a bar, and it looked like a restaurant. And then it had all these rooms and all these details that you just couldn't even imagine. And uh, so when Jason got here and we started talking about this facility, I, I really can just do my job. And um, his commitment to excellence and quality, if you've been in our offices, if you've been in the renovated locker room, uh, we're just we're just going to focus on trying to have that same impact, and we don't want to we don't want to be the biggest arena. We want to be the nicest, and we want to we want it to be a place that's impressionable, and we want it to be something where it's unique. and And I think that's what we're looking for. And you know, I was with him yesterday, and uh, you know, it's just small things that are big things to us. That maybe the con like, and those are the things like the ribbon board up top. You know, like may maybe somebody would be like, well, you know what? Like, is that a big deal? That's a huge deal. Right, because that, and, but if you look at it and you're just looking at a drawing, you think, well, maybe, maybe that's not a big deal. Can we take that out? And I, I, I'm grateful that I don't really have to get inside that space. We're gonna, you know, for for us, we recruit 12 months a year. You know, it's always a funny question when people ask me, like, when's recruiting? Like, it's every day. You know, so, um, you know, my joke around here has been, you know, we we have to try to get functionality inside the Costco warehouse in the summer around here when we bring a recruit in because the courts are pushed back and you got the bleachers that don't come out and there's, there's just been a lot of obstacles that we've had to get around. And so the biggest functionality is going to be that. I think the other one, Pete, that's big for me is to be able to serve our people. You know, and, and this in, in college athletics, it's about creating an event more than it is a game, mm -hmm. right? You, you have to get people leaving that might not know a ball screen of a, from a back screen, but did they see excellence? Did they feel, did they have an emotion, right? Was there an event to it? And so those are the things that in the off season I'll be asking about is just, you know, like you already alluded to, the sound, the lighting. You know, lighting's a huge deal now. Uh, the functionality, the space, uh, all that. And, um, and, and so those are the, those are the things that will, that will be big for us is how does it impact recruiting, but how does it impact our stakeholders? Like, can they come now and feel like they're getting a different experience? And I think with the hospitality spaces, it's really going to elevate us into a spot of excellence where we can really serve Greenville and our campus a lot better. Yeah, on that front also, it's a, it's a good opportunity to talk about the attention to detail by the people that we've worked with. Um, you know, Ken Betch, Aaron Wisting, Raymond Newsom, and I got started on this during COVID. Uh, we said, we got some free time here, so let's start planning this building. Let's start going through these details. Let's begin this fundraising process so we can get this off the ground. Uh, Ken's attention to detail, Ken's experience uh, doing arenas of this size and scale is a, is a major benefit. Uh, other parts of this too, uh, Terry Gormansky's in the back is our project manager. His attention to detail on every last thing that goes into this project, financial, physical, uh, representing finance and facilities is just off the charts. We get that kind of great support from our facilities team. Uh, on the fundraising front, uh, a willingness for our fundraisers to say, what do we need to make this building? This is, again, a, a total team effort. If we don't have the resources to do this, we can't do it the way we want to do it. Uh, we set a very specific goal. We've met that goal from fundraising. Um, those resources allow us to do that. Uh, and then the final piece of this is the vision, you know, to have a coach that sees exactly what Bob just described and wants that experience, not just for his own players, but for this entire campus. Uh, things that we're excited about is not just opening the doors for basketball games, but opening the doors for things that take place at Furman for the next 30 years that become student traditions and things that take place here that integrate our students and our faculty and our staff and our community with our basketball team as part of this process. So um, this has been a very well thought through process to try to go through all these details and it and it really took a team of people to really pull all these things together. Todd Duke, functionality. You know, they, they, everyone met with Todd to say, how does this building work? What are the things we need to know? What are the things that we can't change? What are the things that we need when we talk about functionality? So all those attention to detail moments have been there and really been grateful for Bob's support with all these things in terms of let's go do it. This is what we need and let's figure out how to put it all together. 
selfishly from a broadcast standpoint, thank you for taking us into consideration when you did all of this. Uh, hey, Dan, is, Dan, just for the record, yesterday we're talking about it, and we said TV and home radio will be down on the floor. And Bob says, "Thank goodness," because every time I go up to radio, I can't get up right. there. So, well, you're, from, Dan, you're you're taking care of. We got you. And from our standpoint, being across the way rather than staring at the backside of coaches and players and trying to see through them is always a good thing. What's the timeline and about displacement of the team next year? What will all of that look like? So the timeline, um, and, and part of why we're having this conversation today, people ask, why haven't you made the announcement yet? Um, first part of the timeline is, is inst inst institutional support. Uh, one of the things I really love about working at Furman is we do everything together. Uh, we didn't make this announcement until we had a meeting with our administration, our board of trustees, so everyone could be on the same page together moving forward. That took place this past weekend. Uh, even though we had the funds and we knew where we stood and we were moving in the right direction, but we've been waiting for that moment. Um, we are going to wait till the conclusion of the season to start. And conclusion of the season for us is not SOCON tournament. We're, we want to be in the NCAA tournament. We want to continue to have that success. That's what Coach Ritchie wants. That's what Coach Curtis wants. That's what we want to do with both our men's and women's team. So we're allowing time in March for some of those things to take place, practices, things that need to take place in the month of March. Um, and then construction starts immediately in April. There will be a displacement of 14 months where this building will be offline. Uh, we're planning to move back in in the fall of 2025, so it's going to take one full academic year to do that. Uh, both of the teams will practice in alley gym. We will continue to work with our volleyball program uh, on what that means for them. Uh, we will play games downtown. We've got a great s situation at the at the, the Bon Secours Wellness Arena for our men's team. The majority of those games are downtown. Bob's put a, a great competitive schedule together already, uh, him and his staff, that we're looking forward to for next year. Uh, all of our SOCON games will be there. Uh, the women's team will play at North Greenville. We've got a great relationship with them. Uh, Bob is an alumnus. Uh, has gotten us a pretty good deal there, so thank you. Um, but we're going to play uh, at North Greenville uh, the majority of our women's home games. And then there's still some things we still got to figure out. You know, as a part of this process, the next meeting we'll have is to talk about those things that we still need to work through and determine. But um, the nice thing about this process is this building will be open in the fall of 2025, uh, and we're excited to get everything started then. Jason, you mentioned that uh, you got almost. 40 people donating six figures or more to this project. And your pro bono fundraising team, like you said, <laughs> uh, largely gets the credit. But what's the sales pitch when you go in and ask for that amount of money, you know, I mean, that ends up getting donated? I mean, what's that conversation like between the fundraisers and the people who are donating? Yeah, and, I, and I love Bob to jump in on this conversation as well, but um, we've got a great product to sell. And we've had a great vision for what we want to do. Uh, it starts with a phenomenal institution. It starts with an institution that people love, Furman University. Um, our donors, our trustees, our students, our parents. Um, so I'm not saying this is an easy sell because 40 million is not easy to do. Uh, but I can tell you that there was a sense of, of urgency. There was a sense of interest, inclination on the donor front in terms of what we did. Uh, and what we did is we, we were really, we, we, we pride ourselves in, in honesty and transparency. We're going to tell you exactly what we need and exactly what we're trying to do. And I think sometimes that boldness might come across to some like, whoa, we weren't expecting this. But we come right to our donors and say, here's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Here's exactly what we need. How can you help us? How can we work together with you? Uh, one of the points of pride that we had in our fundraising process, and I, I tease our pro bono fundraisers, but um, we literally had nearly 100% participation from people that we asked. And I think that really speaks to, to the generosity of the Furman community. There, there was not a single ask that went out there that someone said no. Everyone said yes. What can I do? What can I figure out? Now, not everyone has the same level of means. You know, there's different levels of gifts that are in, but some of the best gifts we got are for some young alumni that said, hey, this is, this is a really good gift. It's the best gift that they've ever gotten, and they're, they're young alumni. They're in their 20s. Um, others, you know, we, we would love to have more Ravenel Curries in our community. Um, and we're going to continue to recruit more Ravenel Curries in our community. Uh, but when you talk about having 10 seven-figure gifts towards this project, that's just a significant statement. And the biggest part of that statement is right here. We, we have a coach uh, that has committed himself to this institution. We have a team that has demonstrated success in the classroom, that's demonstrated success on the court, that's demonstrated success in the community. This doesn't happen unless you have a coach that people believe in, that your community believes in, and that can really sell that vision for what we're going forward. And that was really a big piece of it. it one of the biggest pieces we had to do in the fundraising process say, hey, we're committed to Bob, Bob's committed to Furman, we've got this program going what it's going to be, 
We've got the people and the infrastructure in place. That was the biggest part of the sell is that we got this. We've got a president that supports this vision. We've got a board that wants this to happen. And then we went from there. But you want to add more to that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been obviously a, a process of just getting, you know, people together to say, hey, look, it's it's the urgency behind this became a little critical. And, um, you know, because you look at it, this is a situation where this just gets us to where we need to be in terms of the facility front. And we're ahead in some areas. There's no doubt about it. And this but in terms of what people are doing around us and even in league, you know, uh, they, we, we've got a team in the league building a new practice facility right now. you got three or four schools in the league that already have that. Well, why are they able to do that? Well, because their arena's been done. You know? And so we had to get this to where we need this to get to. And I think, I think people just start feeling like, like this is a must. You know? like this has to be done. And I think when you combine it with what we've been able to do as a program and the winning and then the NCAA tournament success, I think that momentum kind of continued to push it to where people really got excited about it. You know, I mean, people would call me and say, hey, like, what, we want to get this done. And then you start hearing, like, the just like anything else, there was a snowball effect to it. And, um, you know, for a while it was like, we have to get this to the finish line. We got to get this to the finish line. And I'm thinking of the people in my mind, you know, or we would have to pull a group together and say, hey, we got to get this amount of money. And they did, you know. And, um, and so it was a team effort. It was a group effort. There was an excitement that got around it. And um, certainly, I think I think the the run in March obviously got even more people excited about it to get it to a point of completion. You know, one of the things I also would be remiss if I didn't mention is just the impact of basketball on Furman University. And these are the things that we are excited to talk about from an institutional standpoint. Um, from a leadership standpoint, we talk about key performance indicators, and we talk about what is the impact. So where are we investing, and what are we doing? Uh, so all of our sports are important, and all of them are successful. But there is one sport that has a chance on a national level as you saw last year when we won the southern conference tournament as you saw last year when we bought when we beat virginia uh, we did a study there was a 41 million dollar economic impact coming back to Furman university in terms of media and advertising we have seen and it's not just basketball we have a great institution but we've seen a 30 percent rise in admissions applications in the last year as a part of people's awareness of Furman university we were ranked the number one uh, institution in the country academically when they ranked all of the teams in the NCAA tournament. Um, we were the academic national champions. Well, that's a credit to Bob because Bob has a thousand APR with his teams for all the times that he's been. I mean, he's graduating every single student athlete that we have. And we're in the middle of a capital campaign that is incredibly successful that people want to give and they want to engage Furman. So our attendance numbers are through the roof. Our engagement numbers are through the roof. Our social media is off the charts at this point. And we have great sports, but we have one sport that has the ability to transform uh, this university. And, and we look at our peers. We look at Davidson. We, we look at Duke. We look at Princeton. We look at those teams that are in our category, in our footprint of what we're trying to accomplish as a great uh, academic elite institution. And that's part of the goal of what we're trying to do uh, is push all those key performance indicators forward so that our institution can have success with this investment. And I think that's a really important, people, a really important point to know for this is that this investment makes it worth it because of the impact it has on the entire institution, not just the basketball programs. I think one thing to add, too, on that that's interesting, you know, you, you, you think about just two of the last three home games have been on national TV. You know, last year's team played on national TV 12 times. And, you know, it, it was, there was years where we'd go and zero national televised games. And the exposure of just, I mean, for a lot of us that were here Sunday, I mean, just an incredible environment, right? Well, that's broadcasted nationally. And now all of a sudden in, in 2025, well, now they get to project that on national TV with the excellence that we're going to have in this arena. The Greensburg game was on national TV, right? We go Western Carolina and Cullowee. Like, those are the things when you, when you have now, you get to put a first-class facility and they show all that stuff. Well, that just shows more excellence on our institution. And um, I think that's another critical piece of this, you know, that, that the more that we can show, hey, this is first class and it matters. And, um, you know, I think that's where we've been able to grow in Greenville. And that's where the fan base and the brand in locally, I think it's our biggest opportunity. You know, like, I mean, everybody talks about we got one of the fastest growing cities. We're, we're sitting right here. Well, once they start to see the excellence and they're going to come back. And the amount of people that are getting exposed to this that have, you know, I've got, I've got a lot of my friends that were all here Sunday. And it's, it's a Clemson grad. It's a Georgia grad. It's another Clemson grad. And, and, and they're coming every game. 
And I think the more that we can expose this city and and let's you know and show them, hey, this is for real. Like, like we we mean what we're saying. We want to be. And and I think they're going to continue to pour into it. And they're going to continue to couple with it. And um, you know, I do I do think our best days are ahead. And I think this is a big piece of it. And uh, I think this is a huge day. And uh, just want to thank everybody for being a part of it. I don't think any of it happens if we don't have a president that's echoing the importance of it. If we don't have a board that's echoing the importance of it, former players. And uh, for us to be at this moment, there's a lot of people that said we couldn't. And um, we, we, we take a lot of pride in continuing to have a vision that's greater than that. Well, I think as, as we wrap up, and I'm sure everybody's cell phone and emails now are blowing up as the video hits and this press conference comes out and press releases go. Uh, Jason and Bob, any closing remarks as, as we put a bow on today's press conference? Yeah, I just want to echo Bob, so I just want to say thank you. Um, we're just incredibly grateful to this community. We're incre incredibly grateful to represent Furman University. We're, we're grateful to be Paladins, and it's a really special moment. Um, and I hope all of you can enjoy this moment. I hope all of you can revel in this. I just, I'm so grateful for all the support as I look around the room for what you guys have done for Furman. And, and thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, we're excited to celebrate this. We'll have a ribbon cutting at some point in April. We'll have a building opening at some point in 2025. Um, but just stick with the Paladins. Let's keep working together and send any suggestions or thoughts that you have. And But just thank you very much for all your support. Same thing. <laughs> You want to do any media stuff first? You gotta go. Unless you want to stay. Well, this guy has to do an individual file. Okay. I'll say it quick. Drew wants to get it. I think you can just stay here. Tell me. Ten minutes. We need Bob. I'll do two. You want to do it here? So he's got a he's got a roll. Thanks for being here. How are you? Good to see you, George. Yeah, absolutely. Always good to see you. We got to get together. Yeah, I know you got so much going on. Yeah. Carve some time. Let's find some time and once yeah. the season gets done. Yeah, once it gets done. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Always good to see you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate all your hard work. I appreciate How hard you're working this year. And the team looks great Sunday. It's me a lot of joy. Yeah. We need a lot of joy. You're right about that. But you got to earn that, right? Yeah, you did a great job. I was trying to get you to come up here. I thought <laughs> what I was trying to lay up was like, hey, what we do when we open this thing, we have to fix it. <laughs> no. No. We're trying to find it. I'm trying. I'm trying to boot somebody off the plane. <laughs>